Today, lots of compact flash express. I've got new CF Express B cards from both Manfrotto and Lexar, along with readers from those companies. We'll compare them to what I have been using and test their speed in both stills and video with Nikon's Blazing Fast Z9. Well, hey everyone, it's Hudson. Welcome to this week's video. I, I'm hoping to demystify and simplify some of the performance characteristics of Compact Flash Express cards as compared to XQD cards of old. Uh, and, and as we're moving into cameras that really take advantage of throughput from these very fast cards, especially the CF Express B cards, we're gonna take a look at a variety of them from Lexar, Manfrotto, Prograde, also the readers from Lexar, Manfrotto, and Prograde. See what the real sustained throughput of these cards actually is. Uh, compare that to sort of the XQD cards we might have used in older DSLRs that we had. We'll look at the performance both in the blazing fast new Nikon Z9 as well as, you know, what does it matter if you're using it, say, in the Z7 II that doesn't have as fast a throughput. Uh, and we'll talk about, you know, where is the future trending with future cameras and where should you invest your money? And, you know, who should this matter for, you know? Uh, I'll also take a quick talk about their performance with video. And, and whatever part of this video you're the more interested in, you can jump into this, to the table of contents. If you look at the full video's description, click show more or the video's title, depending on your platform. You can dive in and I've got a table of contents with linked time codes and you can watch or rewatch any section of this that's more important to you or that you want to jump to. So that's always there, especially in these more detailed technical type videos. I want to make sure you know that that resource is there, along with links to all the stuff that I'm talking about, the readers, the memory cards. Uh, and I'll, I'll put links to the ones that I recommend on my Hudson Henry Photography slash ATS Links website. I keep updated lists and links to all the stuff that I use, stand behind, and recommend. Uh, and those links help me out and I really appreciate everyone using them. They help support the content on this channel. All right. Um, so quick before I dive into Compact Flash Express land in Nerdville, uh, I want to make sure everyone knows we're having an office hour May 10th. We're going to look at your images. So you can submit images, big free gathering on Zoom and YouTube Live. You can watch the replay on YouTube. If it's archived if you have to work at 10 a.m. Pacific. Um, but you can sign up at HudsonHenry.com slash office hours. And the images that we'd like from you, you can see submission guidelines on the website when you sign up at HudsonHenry.com slash office hours. But uh, we'd really like to get an image taken this year that's colorful. We're in that sort of colorful season, whether you're in the north or the south, fall or spring. Um, show us some pictures with some color, some recent images. And we'll go through them and talk about them. So a big free gathering. I hope you'll be there. Love to see your face on Zoom, so sign up, and we'll see you on the 10th. All right. So really quickly, I've got new memory cards from Lexar and Manfrotto. They wanted me to test them out, share my results, and I've also got memory cards from both those companies. Alongside a memory card from, from or a memory card reader from Delkin, uh, and one from Prograde that I've been using for a while. So we'll test all this stuff out. The Manfrotto and the Delkin seem like they're basically identical memory card readers, and I've really been liking the Delkin. Um, I've got that linked on my site. I'll link the Manfrotto in this video and on my site. I like both these readers for a, a, a portable reader to take with you. We'll talk about why. Um, but I want to go through and I wanna test how these cards perform in the Z9 in burst mode. My preferred burst mode is full lossless raw at 20 frames a second. I'm not into the faster than that JPEG modes. I really like the lossless raw. So I'm gonna just throw in you know, my preferred card. The card that I've been recommending to everyone is by far the most expensive of the cards and that's the Prograde Cobalt 650 gigabyte card. This camera produces a lot of data, whether you're shooting high-end video with it, you know, NRAW or ProRes RAW or even just 10-bit 4K oversampled. It, it, it takes a lot of data. So do the big 46 megapixel RAW files as they come in at 20 frames a second. So I think getting small cards for this would be frustrating, like buying 24 exposure ro ro um, you know, rolls of film back in the old days. So I'm gonna scooch over so there's plenty of room to display what's going on on the back of my camera while I do this. 
Um, and you know, I'm gonna just lay, oops, I'm gonna lay in here. I've got the wrong setting on there. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm just gonna make sure that I've deleted all the photos on this memory card. So I'm gonna go in here, hit delete all pictures. I don't wanna delete my backed up settings on the card. So I'm just going into the delete mode from my menu. All right, we got a clean memory card. I'm gonna hit my function one button to put my settings hold into my action mode. We talked about that last week, that function settings hold button. Uh, and I've got a defocused lens here with my, my macro lens so it's not distracting. And I, when I hit that button, it throws me into shutter priority, 20 frames a second, lossless raw. Uh, and, and I'm going to just keep my shutter up at about four thousandth of a second. And I'm going to lay into it, see where we go. And I'll give you a little sort of heads up that basically what happens with the ProGrade uh, Cobalt cards is you get tired of holding your finger down. You can just kind of go forever. Eventually you go, hmm, how many frames was that? And you're at 224 frames. Um, so there's basically no limit to the, 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 the burst modes that you shoot on this fast a card. They're guaranteed to write at 1400 megabytes per second. Um, so that's been sort of my default card for shooting burst action. You know, how important is that to you to be able to shoot at 20 frames a second? unlimited well I mean if you're a if you're big time into birds wildlife or sports those bursts can be really important all right so that gives you that that kind of detail now this memory card is seven hundred and thirty dollars it is not a small investment buying a card that expensive I'm gonna shut my camera down pull that card out I can tell you I tested it in all of the video modes enabled by firmware 2.0 for the Z9 you know the the 8k um, the 8K 60 frame per second NRAW video, uh, ProRes 12-bit 4K at 60 frames a second. And I can tell you that ProRes 4K 12-bit 60 frames a second, 128 gigabytes is less than three minutes of video. That's how much data this stuff is pushing through, 128 gigabytes in less than three minutes. Um, that's some really intense data. This card never broke a sweat, the ProGrade 650 Cobalt. It's expensive, but it's a great card, all right? So let's, by way of comparison, throw in just the standard ProGrade Gold. These are the cards I bought for the Z62 and Z72 originally. I'm gonna throw that in there. We'll run this same test, all right? This is kind of one end of the spectrum to the other. This is my, my sort of cheaper backup card. It's a 256 gigabyte card. I'm gonna hit that button to go into the function one button to throw it into that function hold where we're in shutter priority, 20 frames a second, fast shutter speed. Let's lay it down and see where we get. Here we go. Oh, but make sure that we have no photos on the card. We do. Let's clear the photos on here. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go right here down to delete. Delete all pictures, slot one, yes. All right, now I have nothing on there. Okay, let's roll, here we go. Hit the button. Okay, 41 frames. That's the same as I got in the last test. You could tell, because I have 41 frames on there. So, 41 frames on the ProGrade regular card, okay. The cobalt, there's just no limit. The regular, that's two, that's a little more, that's just barely over two seconds. So that's a big difference. Bottomless to two seconds. All right, let's pull that card. And I can tell you, when I did the video testing, it would not shoot uh, at, in NRAW at uh, 8K at all. It wouldn't shoot ProRes 4K 12-bit 60. The, the, it would shoot ProRes 4K video in 12-bit only at 24 frames a second or less. Otherwise, it would just throw error messages. So it's not capable of shooting the higher end video that the latest firmware has enabled for this camera. It's the only card that I'm testing in this group that I got that result with, all right? And we're gonna talk about how it performs in the Z7 II in just a second. It might be surprising to you the way that these two cards that perform so differently in the Z9 actually are not that different in the Z7 II because it doesn't have as fast a processor and throughput. All right, so here's the big question. What's going on with the new Lexar and the new Manfrotto cards? Um, and, and, you know, just to give you a price differential, this 256 gigabyte card um, 
from ProGrade, the regular gold card is only $140. It's an affordable card. If you don't need burst mode, if you're a landscape shooter, this card's gonna be great. If you're not shooting ProRes 4K at 60 frames a second and 12 bits, or you're not shooting NRAW at 8K, you, you know, you, most people aren't. And a lot of people don't need bursts longer than two seconds at 20 frames a second. If you drop to 10 frames a second, I think you'll find it's virtually bottomless. Um, it's just having that performance that gets every single last drop out of the Z9. We'll talk about it in a second. All right, so in the Z7 too. All right, so let's stay with the Z9, test the throughput of this 512 gigabyte Lexar card. So this is their new professional line of CF Express B cards. All right, here we go. Fire this thing up, turn it on, check to see if there's any images on here. There were 84, I think that's from my last test. Let's see if we get the same thing. We'll go in, delete all pictures from slot one. Boop. All right, and we're gonna go into our faster mode and here we go. It's going longer. There. 86. 84, 86. So well, let's 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 average it out and say 85. 85 frames. Not bad. A little more than four seconds. Okay. Pull that guy out. And finally we're gonna take a look at the Manfrotto. 128 gigabyte professional grade card. You know, these do not have the 1400 megabyte per second sustained throughput that the Cobalt card has, but I think they're supposed to be about a thousand megabytes a second. They still have a guaranteed base level. All right, so again, I'm just gonna jump in here. I'm gonna go ahead and delete all the pictures off the card. Here we go. Go into our mode, and let's try it. Wow. Well, just like our Cobalt um, card, this one doesn't seem to have much of a bottom. And like I said, I tested both the Lexar and this card um, with the video and was able to shoot NRAW 8K60, was able to shoot ProRes 4K 12-bit 60, all the highest end video uh, that the firmware 2.0 enables. We're fine with both of these cards. Now, the ProGrade card, or the, I'm saying ProGrade, the Manfrotto card that we just tested as being virtually bottomless is gonna be, it's, it's also expensive. For the uh, 256 gigabyte version, which I would certainly recommend, it's $389. So you can get a very fast 256 gigabyte card. Uh, the sustained throughput's clearly at least what they say, a thousand megabytes per second. Um, beating out the Lexar 512 a little bit, but the Lexar's a more affordable card at $479 for 512 gigabytes. So, you know, it all kind of depends on what you're after. How important is that burst shooting mode? The one thing I would say is, you know, the great bargain of all these is the Cobalt, pro, or the ProGrade non-Cobalt, the gold ProGrade cards, but they do, again, limit your burst ability with this camera um, and limit your video capabilities. So, I'm actually gonna do something kind of fun here. I'm gonna take the fastest card that we got, the ProGrade card, and I'm gonna put a big video file on here. So as you're watching here, I'm going to flip into video mode. I'm going to go into my menu, and I'm going to select one of the most intensive video modes that we've got. ProRes RAW 4K 60 uh, with extended oversampling. So very, it only gives me 18 minutes with this 650 gigabyte card. And we're just going to hit record for a second. Um, and that way we'll have a big file to transfer when we test these readers. All right, so this is gonna enable us, and I love this red line that they put up on the video while the new firmware 2.0 is enabled so that you can see that it's recording so easily on the back LCD. It looks the same on the back LCD as what you're seeing up here. It's real obvious you're recording even if your face is away from the camera, which is nice. <clears throat> I wanna talk just really briefly about 
the 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 relative speed of the Cobalt card, the 650 gigabyte Cobalt card that I'm using here, and the the 256 gigabyte gold prograde card, the, the fastest card and the slowest card uh, in the Nikon Z7 II. You know, how much of a difference does it make in an older camera that isn't as capable as the Z9 with its blazing throughput of taking advantage of the dual PCI channels that you've got in these CF Express B cards. CF Express A cards have a single PCI channel that's about twice as fast as the old XQD cards that we used. And the new CF Express B cards, which have the same, the same physical look and fit of a C of an XQD card, have twice as fast as the CF Express A, which is like four times as fast as the old XQD cards. So the Z9 can take advantage of it. The Z7 II doesn't have that kind of throughput. So I thought it'd be interesting to test it. I, I ran a burst mode uh, in, in high speed extended mode on the Z7 II, as fast as it can shoot, the biggest raw files it can shoot. And with the Cobalt card, the fastest card, the card we're recording, the, the ProRes video to right now that's so huge, I got 43 frames. When I put the slowest card in here, the one that limited us to just a few seconds of burst in the Z9, I got 41 frames. So two frames difference. That's not stupendous. The big question is, can your camera take advantage of these cards? For me, the first camera I've owned that really can is the Z9. But you know, you are gambling on what the future cameras that you might buy are going to be capable of. And I would argue that the Z9 showcases technology that's coming. You know, Sony's A1 features technology that's coming. The upcoming Canon R1 will feature technology that's coming. And then you'll see that kind of speed bleed down into the bodies that more people buy and use, the smaller bodies, the landscape bodies, the more specific bodies. Um, so I would argue, you know, if you can afford it, it pays to buy the cards that, and if it matters to you, if you're a burst shooter, if you're a high, high quality video shooter, you might want to buy the kind of card that's capable of taking advantage of it. I think three and a half minutes of this ProRes uh, 4K 60 12 or 14 bit video or 12 bit video, what, what were we shooting? 12 bit, and yeah, we don't do 14. Should be plenty sufficient, all right? So I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna get this card out of here and we'll see which of these readers transfers at what speed, the Manfrotto, the ProGrade, and the Lexar. All right, everybody, really quick before we jump in and, and test out these three memory card readers, I wanna just kinda of summarize what we found with testing these, these four memory cards. You know, the ProGrade, uh, Cobalt, and the Manfrotto cards were the fastest. They were bottomless shooting 20 frames per second, lossless, giant raw files in the Z9. Uh, you, you, just, you don't even hit the buffer, you can just keep laying your finger down. If you're an action, sports, wildlife shooter with a Z9, these two cards are gonna make you really, really happy. They're expensive. The ProGrade Cobalt 650 gigabyte card is $730. The 256 gigabyte Manfrotto professional card is $389. You sort of get what you pay for. You know, if you're shooting these cards, in the Z7 II, it's not gonna be that much bigger performance gain than if you were shooting with the cheapest of the cards that we tested. Two more frames in its fastest burst mode. It'll shoot any kind of video, this, this slower card on this camera because it doesn't have those high-end video capability modes that the Z9 has. But in the future, those modes will be coming to cheaper cameras. The throughput and speed of this camera will be coming to future cameras that are down the product line from the Z9, I'm sure. And so maybe future, you know, if you're buying a card thinking about the future, you might think about speed if your resources aren't limited. Um, you know, if you're a person for whom burst shooting doesn't matter, you're a landscape shooter, you never like to shoot sports and action or wildlife, or you're comfortable with a slower burst mode, then these other cards are something to seriously consider. You know, when we took a look at the new Lexar 512 gigabyte card, it's a relative bargain at $479 compared to these other two cards, and we got four seconds of burst mode shooting. We got 85 frames out of it. So, you know, that's, that's a lot of speed. Um, you know, four seconds is a long hold of the shutter button. You heard it when I tested it. 
the original Cobalt Gold card that I bought when I first started getting Compact Flash Express cards because it said 1700 megabytes per second on it, doesn't have that sustained throughput. It drops quite a bit if you start really pushing data into it. And it only got us two seconds of sustained raw file burst mode with the Z9. Again, not much difference shooting this, the cheapest of the cards is $140 for 256 gigabytes in the Z7 II as compared to the most expensive $730 card, 43 images versus 41 images. The only thing I'd say to think about is future-proofing yourself as more and more cameras come out with the ability to take advantage of those dual PCI lanes that these CF Express B cards have and really push data through to get longer sustained burst mode shooting, especially if you like burst mode shooting. For the landscape photographers, get the cheapest card. You know, if you're not shooting action, if wildlife and, and sports aren't your thing, there's no need to spend extra money for a deeper buffer. All right, so let's take a look at throughput of these readers and compare them. So I'm gonna use the, the ProGrade Cobalt because it's the fastest of the cards. And I'm gonna use a Thunderbolt 3 cable to each of these. Each of these has a USB uh, C connection and my Dell XPS 15 has a, U has a Thunderbolt 3 port so that'll be the fastest possible connection. Cables really do matter. I will say that the Lexar cable that comes with this, all these come with cables that are able to maximize the throughput from these. You just don't want to use any old cable. You want to make sure you save the cable that came with your reader and use the cable that came with your reader or a Thunderbolt cable like I'm using. I will say that the Lexar cable that came with this is the most ingenious and beautiful cable I've seen yet. It, it's USB-C to USB-C. It's got metal ends on the connections instead of plastic here at, at the tips that, that lead out. And then there's a metal adapter with its own little keeper that's completely enclosed to go from USB-C to USB-A. And it's very high speed. So that's a really cool perk that comes with this Lexar Professional CF Express B Reader. Um, and it feels like sort of the solid, nicely made, it's a desktop reader. Um, it's heavy, it's well built, just feels robust. I actually wanna test it first. So we're gonna plug that reader in. I plug it in, I get a red light that there's no card in it. I'm gonna go ahead and throw my Cobalt 650 gigabyte card into that that has all of that data. And we're gonna go ahead and just grab this uh, well, let's, let's just grab the whole DCIM folder that has all the data. And on my desktop, you can see I've got this Lexar folder. And let's just drag it in there and see how fast it transfers. All right, so 700. So we're reading and writing here, and this is direct to my NVMe M.2 drive. On, so I'm just putting it directly through to the, to the drive. That's a nice, solid 700, speeding up just a little. That was probably writing those, those raw files because there were a whole bunch, a couple hundred raw files. Now it's writing the video file, which is one large file, enables it to speed up just a little bit. And we're getting up 780 to 790 megabytes per second. Really nice, smooth transfer speed. Oh yeah, we're getting up over 800 as it digs into this. Wow, a very fast reader. 800 megabytes per second is fantastic. All right, we're gonna hit stop. And we will uh, just junk that. So 800 megabytes per second, I'm just gonna say. 800 megabytes per second for the Lexar. And I, I actually am really pleased to see that because I like this reader's form and feel and solidity. And it's a little bit cheaper than the ProGrade reader that I've been using. It's a, it's a $69.99 reader. You cannot use an XQD reader. If you had an XQD reader for your XQD cards, it's totally different. Totally different transfer method. So you need a CF Express B reader if you're transferring from XQD to CF Express B. Totally different reader. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to pop this card out of the Lexar reader, pop the reader out, um, empty the recycle bin, there that goes, 
and let's plug in the prograde reader that I've been using. It has a fast SD card reader as well. I actually had a problem with the first one of these readers that they sent me. It got kind of hot and then it eventually quit reading CF Express B cards. It would read SD cards but not CF Express B. And to prograde's, uh, to prograde's, to prograde's positive feedback, they, they, they listened to me, they asked for me to send it back, and they sent me a brand new one right away. Now you push your card in and it sort of clicks in place. With the Lexar, there's a nice kind of push it in, it clicks and locks in place as if you're putting it into a camera. Um, all right, so here we go. We've got that card in the reader. Hmm. Interestingly enough, I don't see it popping up automatically. Give Windows a second. It looks like it's reading something with the reader. The Lexar reader was smooth. I am literally letting you watch me test these readers. Hmm. Try this again. Hmm. The reader's acting a little odd. There we go. It just took it a minute to read it. Okay. So I'm going to pull this up. Scooch it over a little bit so we can see. We're going to get the prograde folder open to the side of it. And let's just drag the DCIM folder right into the prograde. Everything's just moving a little slower through this. All right, here it comes. 680. Now, again, this is writing all of those, those uh, raw files before it writes the big files. 665. Yeah, it's right. You can see it's writing the NEFs. Now it comes to the movie, it should speed up because it's one large file instead of having to handle a whole bunch of smaller ones. We got about 700. And yeah, it's sticking around 700 and it's 700. Up a little bit, 720. All right, we're going to call it, we'll give it the benefit of the doubt, say 710 or something. All right, so the, the prograde, we'll call it 710. It's a little bit slower, and it's the most expensive. It's $80. It comes with that SD card slot, but most of us probably have an SD card slot if we need one. Um, so let's just go ahead and eject this guy. <coughs> and we'll go ahead and delete that folder. Oops, there we go, up to the bin. And then finally, let's take a look at the Manfrotto. Now, the Manfrotto reader is nice in that it's small, it's light, it's rugged, it's built out of metal, uh, has a USB slot in the back and this little trap door, and you can actually use it as a card reader slot here. Um, you, or as a, as a transport device. So you can literally um, just keep it in your bag with your memory card stored inside it. And I like that, like the Lexar card, you push it, click, it locks in place, you can close that, and you can just store a memory card in there if you want. A spare card can travel with you. It's nice and rugged feeling. It's the perfect one to travel around with. And I've been doing that with a Delkin card reader that looks identical. It's like they came out of the same factory. It's a little bit slower, I think, if it's the same as the Delkin, but it's bomb-proof and really nicely made. Um, and it stays nice and cool, as the Lexar and the new ProGrade reader both seem to stay nice and cool, too. I'm going to plug it in via that Thunderbolt slot, and up it comes. And I'm just going to take that DCIM folder. That was nice and quick. And I'm going to drop it into the Manfrotto folder. And let's see, it's reading those raw files, 300 megabytes per second, significantly slower. Same cable, same setup. Okay, it's speeding up a little bit as it comes through the NEF files, 350, 400. Okay, now it's, it's sped up a little bit as it's cap running through all these. Let's see what happens when it gets to the big raw video file. Let's still see it's significantly slower. <laughs> Here comes the movie file. You know, and it's not that long ago I thought of 450 megabytes a second as really fast. But the Lexar definitely wins out here. All right, looks like it's about 400 and 450. Let's call it 450. All right, so 
here's my take on all this with the readers. I love the fact that this stores a spare card in here and it keeps it nice and safe inside. I like that it's all built out of metal and severely rugged and that it gets, stays closed with its little lid so that you're not going to be getting gunk into the contacts that it's going to have with the CF Express card. When I'm going out in the field and I have my laptop or I'm going on the road teaching workshops and things, I'm fine with a slightly slower transfer speed. This is the one that's going on the road with me that's getting packed in with my laptop in the case. And I can even store a spare memory card in there if I want to. And the Lexar reader is the one that's gonna live on my desk with my desktop back behind me. You know, it's a beautiful reader. It's not a closed reader. It feels as if it could get banged up in travel if it's smashed about too much. It's nice and well made for the desktop. It's got a nice sticky bottom, stays in place. It's fast as can be. So this is gonna be my travel one, the Manfrotto, which is $55 again. And the Lexar reader at $69 will live on my desktop. If you needed just one and you're not traveling around, you know, it just depends on whether that extra $15, what's more important to you, speed or durability and transportability? They're both great readers. All right, so again, links to all the stuff that I've been talking about is up uh, on this video's full description. You just click show more. Um, and, or the video's title, and you can find links to everything that I'm talking about here. All these companies are great to work with. Um, I, I will not deal with companies that aren't great to work with. That's why I sort of dropped my recommendation of the Angelbird Compact Flash Express B cards. They're really affordable, but I've had a couple friends now run into problems with them. I've had one act a little odd, and the company hasn't been great with customer service about just replacing it for people. Uh, they kind of gave people a run around by our reader to try to upgrade the card's firmware. You can only upgrade it with our reader. It's sort of, you know, I'm not inclined to throw money after something that's not working right. So, again, you know, I don't get money from these companies that Manfrotto and Lexar did send me these readers and cards to test out. And I'm just showing you what the results are and what my thoughts about it are. I'm always honest with my product recommendations. And you can find everything that I use and recommend all the time at hudsonhenry.com slash ATS links. So if you have questions, throw them in this video uh, under the comments and we'll, we'll jump to them. Uh, remember again, when you're, you, when you're testing stuff, connections to your computer, the cord that you're using matters. There are different grades of USB cords, some are capable of five gigabytes a second, some are capable of 10 gigabytes a second. Thunderbolt cords are capable of 40 gigabytes a second. That's why I used a Thunderbolt cord to test these readers out. Um, and you know, all this stuff only matters if you're gonna use it. If you're a person who just shoots architecture and landscape, a frame here, a frame there, none of the speed matters that much. But for the bird and wildlife photographer, for the pro sports photographer, those bursts and transfer speeds matter a great deal. The same thing for filmmakers who are actually gonna use the advanced dynamic range and color depth of ProRes RAW and NRAW um, with the new capabilities of firmware 2.0 and the Z9. All right, everybody, thanks for listening. I know it's been a lot of technical stuff. I hope I was able to, to demystify it a little bit and at least give you some results that you could tangibly uh, get a feel for what does what. Um, if you have questions, again, hit me up. I'm always easy, easy to get a hold of, either through the channel or through my email. Um, remember, office hours on May 10th, 10 a.m. Pacific. Send us your images. We're going to go through them and look at them and talk about them. David, Rick, Woody, Darren, and I. Um, and we'd love to have you there, and we'd love to look through your images. This group always submits amazing, amazing images. So join us for that big free photography get-together May 10th, 10 a.m. Pacific. Sign up at hudsonhenry.com slash office hours. Drop your photo there when you sign up. I hope everyone is enjoying the changing season, um, and staying safe, staying creative. Hang in there, and we'll see you next week.